Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at static routing. Also, we're going to be taking a look at default routing. As we can see, inside of GNS3, I already have the topology built inside of GNS3. We still have to do the IP addressing, but we have most of the routers up and running right now. We have a loopback interface on both customer routers. And these loopback adapters are, I'm sorry, these loopback interfaces are used to, to simulate customer networks inside of our GNS3 program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the routers and start configuring them. We already have the names configured on the routers and have them started so we're going to go into the customer 2 router first as we can see the on the customer 2 router we have serial 00 which is connected to ISP2 so I'm going to go ahead and configure that interface first we're going to give it the IP address of 192.168.2.2 with a slash 30 subnet mask also let's go ahead and create our loopback 20 interface and the reason I call it the loopback 20 interface for or why we used it is because we have a 20 network that we're using here within the 192.168 range. So we're going to give it the IP address shown of 192.168.20.1 with the slash 24 subnet mask. You should be able to ping your loopback interfaces once you create them from the router like I just did. So next let's jump into the ISP2 router and we will get it configured as well. We're going to we're going to configure the IP addressing now on router the ISP2 router. The interface serial 00 on ISP2 I'm sorry, serial 01 is connected to customer 2. Again, you can see the topology summary on the right hand side of GNS3 gives us this important information as to what routers are connected to what routers via their links or their interfaces. We'll give the IP address of 2.1 again. That's the connection to customer 2. That is serial 01. The connection that is between the ISP routers, which is ISP2 to ISP1, is serial 00. So we'll go under this interface. We'll give it the IP address of 172.16.1. I'm sorry, not 1.0. That's an invalid IP address. 1.2 with a slash 30 subnet mask. Okay, hey, looks like we have the IP addressing done on the IP addressing done on ISP2. Let's go ahead and try to ping the link between ISP2 and the customer 2 router now, which is the dot two within the two network range. And it looks like we have connectivity now to the customer 2 router. So let's moving right along, let's move into the ISP1 router. Serial 00 is the link to ISP2. Again, you can see we added the description under the interface. Always a good idea when you're dealing with multiple connections on your router. Serial 00, we're going to give it the IP address on ISP1 of 
172.16.1.1 again with a slash 30 subnet mask and as we can also see we have the link to customer one is serial zero one and just to give you guys a heads up I already no shut all of the ports so that's why if you're asking yourself why isn't he not adminning up the ports that's because it's already done again the IP address between ISP1 and customer1 the IP address on the ISP1 router is 1.2 with the slash 30 subnet mask Now since I already connected ISP2, I'm going to try to ping the link from ISP1 to ISP2. So I am I am successful in pinging ISP2. So the last thing we need to do here is if we do a show interface description on customer 1, you can see we have serial zero zero is the link to ISP one so we're gonna go ahead and get that interface configured on customer one and then we should be all done with the IP addressing Again, the IP address is 192.168.1.1 with a slash 30 subnet mask okay now we, we already configured ISP1 we have all the routers configured now so I should be able to ping now from customer1 to ISP1 which is the 192.168.1.2 and we are successful so the next thing we're going to do on the customer1 router is we're going to create our loopback 10 interface we do this